It's Thursday the 15th of August. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and today we're going to be talking about the Airbus A321 aircraft operated by Ural Airlines that went down in a very rare dual engine failure on takeoff just outside of Moscow. I've been flying for 40 years, civilian, military, commercial, and have about two years of experience on the Airbus A320 series of aircraft. So today we're going to review the facts as we know them so far. We'll review some of the videotapes, the many videotapes that are coming out of this accident at this time. And then we'll do a little Airbus A320 systems review and ex answer some of the questions. How does an Airbus continue to operate after both engines have been shut down? The best facts that we have so far come once again from Simon Redecki of the Aviation Herald. If you don't mind, I'll just read them straight off the page here. A Ural Airlines Airbus 321-100 performing flight as U6-178 from Moscow, Zukovs Zukovsky, Russia, to Simferopol, Ukraine, with 226 passengers and seven crew, was in the initial climb through 750 feet out of runway 12 at about 0615 local, that's 0315 Zulu or Greenwich Mean Time, when the aircraft flew through a flock of birds and ingested the birds into both engines. These are the popular CFM. 56 engines manufactured in France. Both engines failed, one emitting noises as if the engine spools up and down, forcing the crew to stop the climb at 750 feet and force land the aircraft in a cornfield about 2.77 nautical miles past the runway with the gear retracted. The occupants of the aircraft evacuated via slides. There were 10 injuries, including three children. The aircraft sustained substantial damage. Everybody got out. There was no post-crash fire. The right engine was smoking a bit after impact. The left engine appears to be smashed up underneath the wing in this view. And the white stuff that you see is fire suppressing foam sprayed by firefighters. The flight crew told Russia media the problem began right after takeoff when a bird hit the left engine, causing it to fail completely, shortly followed by another bird strike into the right hand engine, which subsequently provided insufficient thrust to remain airborne. The captain took control and landed the aircraft in an open field. So now let's review some of the videotape and see what we can figure out from that and then we'll review some Airbus systems. This first passenger video looking out the left side of the aircraft shows the gulls striking the plane. Slow this down a bit for a better view of those birds. A passenger video looking out the right side of the aircraft shows the birds hitting apparently right after V1 rotate speed. Remember from previous discussions on this channel that your V1 takeoff decision speed means that you are going too fast to stop the aircraft in the remaining amount of runway. You must take it airborne. Also appears to be some moisture on the window, slightly obscuring the view, very common on early morning takeoffs. Soon you'll hear the power increase, followed by a series of compressor stalls. chance too that all this wreck could be coming from the ram air turbine which we'll explain in a minute. Now we can see what appears to be some smoke coming from the right engine. I do not think this is early morning condensation.
Landing in the cornfield with the gear up, the aircraft stopped in a very short distance. It appears that all the slides were deployed and everybody got out and had a chance to take a selfie. This is a good reminder to always wear appropriate footwear when flying and count the number of seats between your seat and the nearest emergency exit in case your view is obscured by smoke. Now a word about compressor stalls. The compressor section of a jet engine is the squeeze portion of the suck, squeeze, burn and blow Brayton cycle of a jet engine. The compressor section is made up of a series of tiny aerodynamic wings compressing the air into the turbine section. If this smooth airflow is disrupted by something like a bird strike, the compressor will aerodynamically stall. Here to better explain the effect of all this is young Lieutenant Pete Brown. Just like Daddy's landings in the Lescom. And the high temperature and pressure air in the combustion section escapes out the front and rear of the engine. And the course of action is to retard the throttle on the affected engine until the compressor stalling stops. If you reach idle and the engine is still compressor stalling, you'll need to shut it down. The names of the pilots of this aircraft have already been released to the public. Captain Demir Yusupov, age 41 with 3,000 hours total time and a 2013 graduate from flight school and co-pilot and the co-pilot whose name I can't pronounce is 23 years old with only 600 hours total time and a 2017 graduate from flight school. Now a quick review of Airbus systems. The Airbus like all airliners has a triple redundancy. The Airbus is a fly-by-wire aircraft and requires electrical power and of course hydraulic power to operate the aircraft. Electrical power to run the flight control computers which are on all the time and hydraulic system to primarily operate the flight controls. There are three hydraulic systems on the Airbus. Green, blue, and yellow, better known in Boeing parlance as left, center, and right. The green hydraulic system is powered by the left engine, left engine hydraulic powered pump. The yellow system by the right engine. The blue system is, would be typically called the center system in a, in a Boeing product and is powered electrically. With both engines shut down, hydro, there's residual hydraulic pressure in the system. This was a very short flight. However, to back up the hydraulic system is a ram air turbine. A rat. The rat is deployed in the Airbus when both main AC power sources are lost. The rat is a small windmill that deploys out the bottom of the fuselage. It's a constant speed propeller, variable pitch, and provides blue system or center system hydraulic pressure sufficient to power the entire aircraft. This rat is only good down to about 140 knots, at which time the rat stalls and the pressure and the power is lost. However, there are both for the electrical system backup. Let me back up a little further. The RAT not only supplies pressure for the center or blue hydraulic system, it also provides electrical power through a CSMG or constant speed motor generator. So you're taking hydraulic pressure, spinning up a small electric generator and providing AC power to the aircraft. Also providing electric power to the aircraft in the event of an emergency or dual engine failure are the batteries. However, the batteries can, via inverters can provide AC power only for about 20 minutes. This flight, of course, was much shorter than that. Here's a picture of the RAT or Ram Air Turbine deployed out the bottom of the aircraft. And here is a picture of the hydraulic pump that provides pressure to the blue or center hydraulic system. Here with both engines failed, we can see the green and yellow or left and right hydraulic system pressure dropping and the rat, which picks up the hydraulic pressure very quickly in a matter of seconds, supplying center or blue system hydraulic pressure. Plenty of pressure to power the flight controls.
Of course, all of this is happening automatically behind the scenes so the crew can concentrate on flying the aircraft. The rat can also be deployed manually with a red guarded switch on the overhead panel. Dual engine failure in an airliner is a memory item, but is typically practiced or rehearsed as an event that happens at altitude. Dual engine failure on takeoff and a subsequent forced landing is not something that is typically practiced in the simulator. There's also a memory checklist item for a dual engine failure to get the engines relit, but in the case of this accident, the, the whole entire event happened too quickly after takeoff to initiate such a checklist. And the crew did the right thing by continuing to fly the aircraft all the way to the scene of the accident. And the crew was very lucky, very fortunate, that the cornfield out in front of them was completely unobstructed and completely level. It's also fortunate that it was daylight outside as well. So with loss of power to both engines, loss of main AC, the rat deployed, just barely above 140 knots. Hydraulic pressure is sufficient between the winding down of the two engines and the rat, plus electrical power provided by the inverters off of the battery sufficient to operate the flight control computers and con continue to fly this aircraft into the cornfield. So I hope this gave you a better understanding of what happened to the Airbus A321 aircraft outside of Moscow today. We'll keep you posted of any updates, and if you have any further links to more information, post them here. See you here. I'll be getting that 737 MAX update out to you next week.